Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about Lightroom Classic, what are my settings, how am I working, and most importantly I'll explain why. Because if you don't know why you're doing something, it's really hard to get better and improve. So we'll talk about catalogs. Should you make a catalog for every single project or keep building one giant catalog? We're also going to look at some presets, how to automate some of your presets so that they import on every new photo and save you a ton of time. So let's jump in. Hey guys, back with another video here. We're going to jump into Lightroom, specifically Lightroom Classic. I prefer this over Lightroom CC, which is the newer one that Adobe came out with, but it lacks, lacks some of the features that Classic has. It's kind of dumbed down or scaled back, and it's also really linked to their cloud service. So their cloud service offers 20 gigabyte or one terabyte storage space, and that's not even close to enough storage space for shooting raw photography on a regular basis. You'll probably fill that up within a year pretty easily. So go with the classic, get all the tools, and I'll show you how to save files so that you can use storage wisely. And you can always get your own cloud storage, and then you can customize it much more than Adobe offers. So today we're going to look less at the hardcore settings of the program and more at how to work efficiently. So let's take a look at something right now. Let's open up Lightroom Classic. Lightroom Classic by default is going to open the default catalog called Lightroom Catalog. A lot of people like to dump all of their files in here every single time they shoot and they end up getting this giant catalog with all of these linked folders and when they start moving them they get unlinked and they get lost. Maybe you start backing your work up. Don't do this mega catalog route. You want to start a new catalog for every project. And you want to put it in a folder that can hold all of your, your data with it. So let's put the catalog in raw. We're going to call it finger paint. So it's going to close down that catalog. It's going to open up a brand new one. I'm not sure why it launches the whole app all over again. But now we have Finger Paint catalog open. You can see at the top. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up all of our panels. They all start closed up. Not sure why. Kind of silly. Can't see anything. Good to have everything open in front of you. It's really quick to just scroll through it once they're all open. There we go. So from library, we're going to go to import. I'm going to drop it in my USB, just like I'm uploading a new project. So here's my device here. It's going to show me all of my photos. And the default is copy. This is great. You don't want to move or remove your files. You want to leave your files on your card. I like to leave my files as the camera's default. I don't have a problem with it. Copy as DNG is nice too. I just don't see any personal benefit. You can see the default preview here is embed and sidecar. You want to switch this to one to one. The reason for this is when you import these files, you'll get the largest preview possible so you can zoom in and see if you got the focus. You want to be able to compare all of your photos to see if you nailed the focus and it's the shot you want. If you're looking at fuzzy previews, you're hurting yourself. You don't need smart previews. You should always have your RAWs on you. You should never be missing them or working without them. You will never need smart previews. You're just going to take up unnecessary space on your hard drive. Renaming files. Look at the names of these files. MG and then four digits. What's going to happen if you go down this route? You're going to start having duplicate files. And I've run into this and I, ever since then I've been doing custom names. So we're going to call this finger paint. So it's going to rename every file finger paint. And then we'll give it a sequence right after. So one, two, three, and you can see right here. Apply on import. We're going to talk about this after we import our first photo. Destination. We're going to put in our raw. And take a look at what happened. 
I shot this over several days, and the default is to make a folder for every single day that I shot. This is a horrible way to organize your work. Tell it to dump it all into one. Boom. All of these files are now going to be together in one project. They're all raw files, nice and neat. I like to turn off eject after import. That way, if I missed a file or I wanted to do any other work, it's still mounted to my hard drive. Let's import one photo to start. Go to develop. You can see that raw files start off with no settings applied to them. Everybody has a certain style that they like to see in their photos. So when you import your work over the years, wouldn't you want to see your files all start from a nice starting point? Let's do that now. I like a little bit of contrast in my photos. I like to bring back a little bit of the highlights. I like a little bit of saturation. And I like some sharpening. Let's save this as a preset. Call it Demon and Import. And create. And I'm going to right click that. Say Apply on Import. Now watch what happens. Let's go back to Library. Import. And I'm going to import a different photo. And look what happened. The develop preset automatically selected Demon and Import. Every single file I import from now on will have this applied to it. This light touch that just makes everything look a little bit better and helps me judge and compare my photos later on. Check that out. It brought in those settings. If I hit reset, you can see here's the original, redo, it brought it back. I'll, I usually adjust these over time, slowly tweak them so that, they, so that it continually looks more like the starting point that I want to see. This is just a quick example. Now let's say we're done working for the day and we close down Lightroom. Sometimes you'll get this dialog box that pops up and says, would you like to back up your catalog? And what that'll do is it'll take your catalog file that we just created called Finger Paint. It'll make a copy of it in a folder called Backup. It's just a waste of space. You're better off backing up your work on another hard drive or a cloud and not continually making these backup files. I at one point had five backup files in one of my projects and it took up a gigabyte of space. So the way you get rid of that is to go Edit, Catalog Settings, don't tell me every week to back it up. Never tell me. I don't need you to remind me. I'm really good at backing up my own work. And that's it. Keep yourself organized, and we'll talk about older structure and how to manage projects in a professional way in another video. Thanks. Hey, thanks for watching. If you got some value out of this video, please like and subscribe to this channel. It lets me know I'm headed in the right direction. And I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Thanks.